welcome to Cybersecurity Training. This session will prepare you to better handle situations involving email, online resources, data, and electronic devices. We'll look at a top 10 list of the most important things you can do to work safely with our information and technology. Let's get started. Number one, you are the first line of computer defense. It's important to remember that you are both a target and a vital part of our computer security plan. Criminals know that on any given day, almost anyone can be tempted or fooled into doing the wrong thing. Human error accounts for the vast majority of computer security incidents. Understanding your important role in security and implementing the next nine tips will improve your ability to keep yourself and our technology secure. Number two, take passwords seriously. Are you still using 1Password for everything? Or 1Password for everything at work? That needs to stop. Are you sticking your passwords to your computer on post-it notes? Keeping them in your desk drawer in a notebook labeled passwords? Listing them on your cell phone or computer in a file called passwords? That needs to stop. Every login should have its own unique secure password. Every single one. If you have more than one password, and we all do, use a password manager, such as LastPass, Dashlane, or Keeper, to securely store your passwords across all of your devices. These standalone apps are more secure than using your browser to remember your passwords. Use one. Number three, examine every email. Think about email the way cyber criminals do, as an opportunity to get their message in front of you. Some dangerous email comes from real email accounts that have been broken into or hacked. These will have email addresses that will be familiar, but the message itself may ask you to do something suspicious. Send cash, turn over your password, or click on an unusual link. Dangerous email more often comes from unfamiliar addresses, and much of it is either spam or something called social engineering. Spam emails are generally sent out randomly to as many people as possible in the hope that someone, somewhere, will open the email and take action. Think bogus inheritance, suspicious prescription drugs, or odd romantic overtures. Social engineering email tries to get you to do something unwise by pretending to be something or someone it isn't. The email may look like it comes from a trustworthy person or company, and it will count on that sense of trust to manipulate you. Here are some clues that the email may not be what it seems. The sender's email address. Look for close but not quite right addresses with easily missed errors. One common scam these days is a generic but plausible Gmail account, like your company at gmail.com, with a real person's name from the company as the sender's name. That sort of account does not mean that the person was hacked. This is a fake account. Recipients' email addresses. Are there several people listed in the to field who are all complete strangers? That's a warning sign. Look at the subject line. Are you being threatened or given an order? Does the subject have nothing to do with the rest of the email? Proceed with caution. Check out the links or attachments. Are you expecting anything? Has this person sent things before? Verify before opening or downloading anything. Finally, be aware of the language used in the email. Many people record their emails on the go or rely on autocorrect, which may result in misspellings or the occasional incorrect word. But wild misspellings or awkward sentences should raise red flags that the sender isn't who they are pretending to be. Number four, think before you click. Download now, click here, install this. Inspect all links carefully before you click on anything. With links or attachments and emails, 
Be especially careful. Clickable things like links or files can contain malicious code or take you to convincing looking but fake websites. Mouse over links without clicking to see if the address that shows matches the link text. If an email attachment or link is suspicious, verify it by contacting the sender using a trusted email address or phone number, not the one in the suspicious email. Avoid downloading programs or files from websites unless it is a known, verified, and trusted source. Number five, update your devices. Updates happen. Updates should happen. Updates often include security components to make your technology more reliable and harder to compromise. Sometimes updates appear at inopportune times and they get put on hold. It's okay to delay updates temporarily, but you need to update your devices, apps, and programs. Remember to restart your computer at the end of the day to give it time to install updates during non-work hours. Number six, secure your stuff. Most of us live in places where we lock our doors at night. Why? So our stuff doesn't come up missing. Think about your technology and desk the same way. When you walk away from your computer, lock the screen, especially when you're working on sensitive documents. And speaking of sensitive documents, don't leave them lying around on your desk out in the open. If you're working in a public space, be sure to secure your devices and documents if you need to walk away from them. Be aware of who is around you. Be cautious about accessing sensitive information or typing in passwords using unencrypted public Wi-Fi. Number seven, avoid stray accessories. Imagine walking into the office and finding a 64 gig mini SD card in the parking lot, the kind that would provide extra storage in your cell phone or laptop. What should you do with it? Well, you shouldn't plug it into any of your devices to see what's on it. It could have a virus or malware on it. In fact, it may have been left deliberately where you found it to tempt someone to do just that. The best course of action is to resist temptation and turn the memory card, USB drive, or other device into lost and found. Number eight, share carefully. Social engineering relies on getting you to trust someone who means harm to your data or your devices. One way they can gain your trust is to use information shared on social media to convince you that they are someone you know. Be careful with what you post, especially on sites where your posts are public. You may not think that anyone would ever care which company you work for because you don't have access to highly sensitive information. But remember, significant data breaches have come about because criminals have worked step by step to broaden and deepen their access by using bits of information to work their way upward through a company's hierarchy. Number nine, ask questions. When it comes to device and data security, it's always better to ask questions when faced with an unfamiliar or suspicious situation. Did you send me this link to download files from Dropbox? Is this a legitimate program to install? Do you really need me to provide that information? As your awareness increases about security issues, you will better understand what types of situations should raise questions. Number 10, report problems. As we said at the beginning, you are both a target of cyber criminals as well as part of the defense against them. Part of your job in defending against cyber attacks and data breaches is reporting problems to the IT department when you encounter them. Be especially watchful for suspicious emails or links in emails, requests from Microsoft Authenticator to approve logins outside of your workday, insecurely stored passwords or files, programs that you don't recognize, phone calls, asking for sensitive information. In this session, we talked about your role in our cybersecurity efforts and the actions you should take to protect yourself, 
our data, and devices. Remember to keep your devices, data, and documents updated and secured in safe places. Avoid plugging in, opening, or clicking on anything unfamiliar or suspicious. Always use secure, unique passwords. Be wary of sharing information, especially passwords, that could be used to access vital data. And be sure to contact the help desk with your questions and concerns about security issues. Thank you for your time and attention. <music>